Hello and welcome back everyone. This is a quest master Shreyansh on the quest introduction to Rust. In this specific sub quest, we'll be discussing about loops within Rust. So let's start with the loop construct. We'll say that we have a number which we'll multiply till the time the value of that number, in this case x, is less than 5000. Let's start by declaring a mutable variable x which will contain our values. We'll start the loop and anything between these curly braces will be run forever. In this case, we'll multiply the value of x by 2. We'll print that out using the println macro as we're so familiar with by now. And finally, let's try running this. When we do cargo run, we see it prints out the values, but also it gives an error attempt to multiply with overflow. Let's figure this out in code. We said that the condition should be till it is less than 5000. Let's add an if condition, which we learned in the previous sub quest and the condition is met. We'll say break because the loop will go on forever. We need break. What break does is that it breaks out of the current loop, moving the control to the next line. In this case, we'll just do a very quick print Ellen to check if everything is working. Let's move on to the terminal and let's do a cargo run. We see all the values from two all the way up to 4096 are printed after which we see outside the loop. Perfect. Let's talk about while loops next. While loops give us the ability to have the condition within themselves, which means that they execute a block of code till the time some condition is met. In our case, this is the perfect use case because we have a condition which is X is less than 5,000. Let's discuss how would we write this loop as a while construct. So let's start by going down a little bit and we will say while some condition which needs to evaluate to true for this loop to run. So we won't write that right now, followed by curly braces. And this is where we write the code. Again, this will be the same as the last one. What I'll do is also I want to change the name of the variable so it's a little easier to distinguish which one is which. So here, let me just change the variable to y. Let me just declare the variable y. It'll be similar to x. And let me just change this here as well in the primary control logic. Let me scroll down a little bit here and I'll just clean up the lines of code which we are not using. Finally, all that is left for us is to figure out the condition. Now, if we scroll up, we see that we need to execute the piece of code till the value is less than 5000. We broke out of the previous loop when it was more than 5000, but in this case, we need to do it before. So in this case, we'll say when y is less than 5000. Let's move on to the terminal and let's see what happens. So cargo run and we see that the value has been printed from 2 all the way up to 8192. Something we don't want. Let's try figuring that out. We'll take the first iteration where the value of y is 4096. The condition of value is to true since it is less than 4096. Moving on, the line is executed. It's doubled. So 4096 times 2 is 8192. Moving the control to the next line where then the value of y is printed. Perfect. In the next iteration, the value of y is now 8192 which is where the condition trips, it evaluates to false, and our execution stops. The last kind of loops we have available within Rust are for loops. They're a little different from what you might be used to coming from a variety of different languages. For loops within Rust are almost exclusively used for iterating over a set of values. In this case, we're using the range syntax to generate ourselves a list from 0 to 9. The 10 is exclusive and printing that out. Let's go and run this in the terminal we see that all the values from 0 to 9 are printed. So just as a reminder, this is the exclusive range syntax, which means every value from one less than the right hand side, so the right is exclusive, is included in the range. Now the question becomes, what if you had to make something a little more explicit, something which is a little more easier to understand the moment you set your eyes to it? There is a way to do that, and we'll look at that next. Now, we'll do the same thing we'll say for y in 0 dot dot and we'll add an equal to. This means an inclusive range, which means the values from left and right are inclusive. So this should again print out all the values from 0 to 9. Let's try running this in the terminal with cargo run. We see all the values for x were printed from 0 to 9 in the exclusive syntax and for y from 0 to 9 in the inclusive syntax. Great. You can also use the for loop with iterators, a concept which we will discuss a little bit in depth later on. 
For now, suffice it to say, you can essentially run over all the elements within an array. In this case, we'll print out all the elements in the array we have defined here, one, two, and three. In the terminal, we do cargo run, and we see it prints out the values one, two, and three.